This is Live with Ryan Reese. Call now, one 564 6173 or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. You better get ready, because it's going to go down tonight. I have a very special friend. Not only a friend, but I would say family. <laughs> it's, 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 it's pretty much family. How long have I known you, Jenna? Um, I think five or six years. It's, it's been, been a long... It's been a long time. Five and six years. <laughs> yeah. I think just because I've been so wrapped up in your family with your dad, um, mm-hmm. for you guys don't know, um, I'm here to interview Janaya tonight, but clearly I'm friends with the family. Her dad is uh, Brian Headwell from Corn. Mm-hmm. And if you read the new book, which I encourage everyone to go get, uh, you would have read this, well, <laughs> the whole book has you in and out of it because that's why he left Corn is to, to raise you. And we're going to talk about the journey tonight. But um, you have an amazing note at the end that Sean and I uh, heard, and we were like, "Dude, Janae is gnarly." <laughs> <laughs> Hi, it, was like, it, it was like poetic. That's why I was like asking her, her dad, like, "Is she a writer or something?" And I was asking her before the show, and you it got, is something that she's kind of delving into right now in her life, and it was pretty, pretty amazing. You got the skills to pay the bills. <laughs> Seriously, so are you planning to to write? In, yeah, yeah. Yep, I'm going to college for creative writing for entertainment, so. It is going down. It's I'm going excited. Down. Dude, seriously, because, like, I can't read, you know. I mean, I, I can somewhat, but um, when I read your dad's book a while ago, it took, it. I, I was so hungry for it that I read it in three days, which mm-hmm. anyone could have probably read that in, like, a couple hours. But um, it, uh, you know, what am I trying to say here is that, uh, I lost my whole... You were making some <laughs> moves over here and you confused uh, me. Sorry. ADD, Ryan can get distracted See, really what, easy. That's what I was just that's talking about. For. Remember about the church? That's what I'm here for. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm excited <laughs> that you're going to start writing because your dad's an amazing writer. You got the skills to write. And uh, when I read it, it really, um, even though I can't read like I was saying, it really impacted my life that, that one. It was just a quick note. Yeah. But it was like, it was deep and it was heavy and it... It impacted my life for sure. So I'm just stoked that we get to have you on the show and we want to talk about your story. But we know one thing, you're here with a group of people and it's called Awakening Youth. Awakening Youth. What yep. is Awakening Youth? Okay, well, Awakening Youth is an experience. That's <laughs> what it is. Okay, tell me about this experience. Awakening Youth is... Um, it's an experience for um, girls, teenage girls from ranges from 13 to 23. We've had all sorts of ages. And um, basically we're in this um, this place secluded from social media, all our old friends, you know, old, old towns. And um, basically we're put in this new place where we can only listen to certain kinds of music, have certain kinds of things, certain privileges. Yep. And um, we're ex- exposed to the Lord pretty much. It's um, it's not um, to- it's it's a Christian boarding school, yeah. but um, but there's also uh, other r- religious girls that are in there too. So it's uh, pretty much for anyone. It's it's for anyone. Yeah. It's Christian based, but it's for anyone. Yeah. And um, all all the girls come from d- different backgrounds, from California to New York, some from Canada, um, Africa, Ukraine. In here, yeah, there's Ukraine. A girl in here from Ukraine. Hey, uh, <laughs> representing that likes potatoes. Sub Dasha. <laughs> Sweet so, potatoes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's just a really great place where girls could just find themselves, learn who they are, and then, you know, just. Well, what you were saying is. Um, these girls come to this place. They're, they, you know, we have this tour called Kill the Noise. It's a high school tour, and mm-hmm. it's to kill the distractions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and totally. that's, you guys are on a Kill the Noise tour. Yeah, in yeah, a building, right. Or yeah. with a group of people, and you're getting rid of social media, and you're you're basically tuning out so you could hear God's voice and find out the purpose why you were created. Totally. Because you know Jesus says, you know. Uh, that you were created as a, a masterpiece. That's mm-hmm. that's God's word. Mm-hmm. That you were created with a masterpiece, and and God has a plan for every single one of us. Yeah. But just like so many uh, kids and in and teenagers, like you and I can relate because we grew up in Christian home, mm-hmm. but we we walked away from God and got into some trouble, which we're going to talk about tonight. But um, you now seeing you how you got to kill the noise, find out the reason why you were created. And now you're, I mean, just that, I'm going to go back to that little note you wrote. Like, that's insane. Like yeah. the Janae I met a long time ago to now, it's like you you are truly like aligned with God's plan and his will and what he created you for. And you're going to find out there's going to be way, tons of gifts that he has for you. Thank you. But um, you have to kill the noise to, to do that. So you guys yeah. are all there. 
hanging out. There's girls from all over the country. Where Do you know how people can even find out about this place? Is there a website or anything? Yes. So the website is awakeningyouth.net. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it, you contact Tiffany, Travis, uh, mm-hmm. Claywell, or D and Dean Beaker. Um, they're... And they're aw- they're awesome people. We've had Tiffany on the on the radio show um, several times, and we'll have her next time she's in town. So, how did you even get involved with Awakening Youth? All right, well, let's just get into it. <laughs> let's just go down this road. Okay, well, you know, before you get started, I think that's what Ryan was saying in the beginning was it's a trip. You like how long have I known you? Five six years. And, you know, five, six years go by so fast, but I think what for like Ryan and for myself, like our perception is like five, six years, the reason why it seems like such a long time is because they were pivotal years of your life. You know, when we met you, you're just a a young girl at that time. You're 18 years old now. How old were you? Minus six, you've been probably about 12 years old at that time. 12 or 11, yeah. Yeah, 11 or 12 at that time. And a lot of things have changed. And, you know, this Awakening Youth program obviously has radically changed your life. You know, and going back to the book, you know, there's a lot of things that are there that brought you to a place where you were, you know, messed up in a lot of ways. Uh, One thing you brought up a second ago, Ryan, was like the social media thing and, and kill the noise and no distractions and I remember that was one thing your dad was struggling with with the social media stuff that a lot of young people get caught up in like totally. social media can be a, a great thing but it could be a great hindrance as well mm-hmm. right and so that was something that you're struggling with and um, I'm sure there's other things that actually like Ryan just asked you the question what brought you into this program mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so go ahead okay well um, where did it all begin <laughs> where did it all begin It began in um, the sunny side of Torrance, California. That's where I was born. All right. And um, I was born, I forgot what the hospital was called, but I was born over there. I was raised around the Orange County area, and um, we moved. Oh, I'm going to pull that mic up to you a little bit. Okay. Or just turn it in, yeah. Okay, so so we, um, I was kind of raised in California, and that's where my dad had a radical... um, uh, change in his life. He found the the Lord. He quit drugs. He quit all of those things and um, left his band to go um, seek God and seek more of him and be there for me. So we moved to Phoenix, Arizona. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a lot of <laughs> lot of crazy, crazy things that have that happened there. Like, you we know, can talk about a couple stories. Right, right, yeah, right. right. Yeah. <laughs> so so um, a lot of crazy things happened there. Um you know, I think uh, my dad trusted some people. Like when he first got saved, he he went to the first Christians, you know, like he met and, he, and they had this huge plan. They were ready to do this huge thing. And so my dad was like, yeah, I'm on it. Sounds good. And, um, you know, they ended up using him. Mm-hmm. They ended up leaving him in the dust, taking all his money. And, mm-hmm. and so as a little girl growing up, my dad heard about or told me about God Mm -hmm. and how he was so good, how he changed his life, how he was going to be there for us. But then I saw these Christians that were using him and taking his stuff and taking his money. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, wait a second, like what's going on? Yeah, this doesn't add up. And so I think growing up, I kind of had that hurt, you know? And um, do you think there was like at at that point, um, like like bitterness or just kind of like, Get, your guy had a bad taste in your mouth for, for the church at that point. Totally. Because these people call themselves the believers. Came mm-hmm. off fake. Well, yeah. And, and the thing is, Head, I mean, when, when Head was talking about it, he's reading the Bible and the Bible's like, love one another. So he's like, oh, all Christians are like right. awesome. They're they're all like me. Like they want to give their life to Jesus and spend yeah. money on God. But there are crooks. Jesus had Judas in his totally. posse. Absolutely. Stealing money. Yeah. People with an agenda. So he had he was hanging out with Judas, some people like Judas using them and, and you're getting bad taste in your mouth. Exactly. And so um so I think just being raised around that I was just kinda confused and um you know, I started hanging out with like some friends that were kind of like messing around with stuff, you know, like it's like smoking a little bit of weed or whatever, mm-hmm. just like, you How know. How relatable just, is that though? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It just like, just kind of innocent, like middle school, high school kind of stuff. And so, so um yeah, I know. And so I started to hang out with those kids and um, they kind of would talk to me about okay, like- Wait, hold on a sec. Were you in private school? Um, yeah. D- during this time? Yeah. In so, okay, so you're well. in Christian private school? Um, it wasn't Christian, but okay, so private, you're in a private school, school, you know. Okay. Yeah. And so I was in these uh, private school and, you know, I would talk to kids and they would be like, 
yeah, my mom left, my dad left, he was a drunk and blah, blah, blah. And so I started to think about my past and um, my mom left when I was three. Mm -hmm. And so um, I didn't realize how much that affected me until mm -hmm. I started hanging out with those kids and they'd be like, man, life sucks. And mm -hmm. I hate, I hate this, I hate that. My dad did this to me. And so I'm like, oh man, now I now it makes sense. And so I started having this like, this hate, this bitterness. Yeah. My mom, these Christians that were using my dad, my dad and me would, you know, we butt heads, you know, daughters and dads, right. you right. know. And, and, so, and hanging out with your dad would be, <laughs> that'd be crazy anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right? <laughs> and so, um, so yeah. And um, I think just with all of that, it just started to go kind of downhill. Um, I... I turned to social media a lot. I I had was I was on Facebook, I was on Twitter, I was on Instagram, I was on Ask FM, I was on all of it. And um basically like I didn't get a whole lot of uh, affirmation from my dad. Right. Mm -hmm. Um and and I was missing that chunk from my mom too. Mm -hmm. You know, like girls need their their mama, you know. Yeah. And so so I got my affirmation and my self worth from social media. Because I wasn't getting it from anywhere else. That, you know? that's, We're going to talk about that That's bit. major. If you're tuning in right now, this is live with Ryan Reese. Um, you can also watch us uh, live at ryan-reese.com. Um, always go there. That's where you have all uh, Ryan's shine studies and all the archives of our radio program. We're in studio with myself and, and Ryan and our good friend Jenea and just talking about her life right now of just her dad, you know, having this dramatic conversion to the Lord and then and her, she's seeing her dad kind of get done dirty by some Christians like with like a business agenda. Those things were starting to kind of affect her in a way, like kind of like, why are these people fake, this agenda? And then just trying to find herself. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what's so important. And Ryan, you were saying the same thing, Ryan. Like you kind of get brought up in that environment. But the thing is, is like we all have to find our own relationship yep. with God. Totally. Like we're all on our own journey yep. in life. And, at, you know, we get affected by people smoking weed and stuff like that. Other kids we grow up with. And it starts to mold us into the people that we are. Yeah. And you were just talking about the how social media. social media was where you were kind of getting affection yep. and affirmation. And a lot of people, especially this younger generation, I'm glad that you're here because um, it's something that you can really relate to. So maybe somebody that's mm -hmm. out there and yeah. relate to them. Why is that? Um, why is it something that can be good in some ways can become such a great hindrance in your life, which mm -hmm. it did? Yeah. How? Um, hmm. Because, I mean, you were, like, addicted to it. Yeah. I mean, big time. And Basically. and what's interesting, I mean, because I want you to, like, expound on this because mm -hmm. there's so many people, there's parents that are listening mm -hmm. that their kid is addicted to social media. I mean, you go to dinner table and you look over and you're like, yep. that's the whole family over there eating dinner, but they're all like... <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, so they're eating dinner, but but they're not, like, together. No, yeah, there's no, no yeah. unity, Patience. and that's, that's happening. But, I, like, I was with one of my friends the other day, and he was saying, like, we live in this society that... Like Instagram gives us our self worth. worth yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Like, it's so how true. many views? How many likes? Yep. I'm posting these photos, and I can't. I'm I'm searching for my comments. Yep. Um, to make me feel. Yeah, you tell like what? How did it work with you? Because this is this is crazy. This this world we live in with social yeah. media. You were looking for. So basically, when I was on social media. Um, I had all my friends on there that I knew from uh, back home and other states I lived in, but I also um, was friends with people I didn't know too. Yeah. That I thought were cool or whatever. They had cool style or they were into stuff like me. And so I would just, instead of meeting people in real life, I would meet people on Facebook and on Instagram and talk to them. And like, if they would like my new picture, I'd be like, oh, that oh, they like my picture. You know what I mean? It felt right. good. Mm -hmm. It felt good that people liked me because I wasn't, I didn't think that people liked me out here, out in the world. Mm -hmm. It was like on my phone. It was, I, that's where I thought people liked me. Mm -hmm. I thought wow. if, if I was out here, I would embarrass myself. No one would like me. No one would care about me. They would just leave me. And so- So you could hide behind and it. I could hide, yeah. And yeah. it's a place where you can kind of express yourself too. Totally. Like stuff that's in your heart, your mind or whatever. Express yourself and like, um, create this almost persona, uh -huh. basically. Yep. Mm -hmm. So. It's, uh, yeah, because you, you, you post only the pictures that you want. Of course. Yeah. And it's a whole deal. And Totally. Dude, that's, that's, that's pretty crazy. 
So that's that's actually good stuff to know for mm-hmm. for parents. You know, as these yeah. kids are growing up, you, it's you got to be very limited to to that stuff. And if that controls our life, there. I mean, if you're living in your device, your your face is down. You're missing like life that's like going on totally around you. I, I was listening to the statistic that it talked about that. It's like it's so crazy. Like in the times we're living in today, communication is at your fingertips at all time. You can communicate with your family across the state, other countries, um, build these relationships all over the place. But what they did saw in some surveys that people, even though they had so much communication on that those outlets, they were depressed. Yeah, they felt lonely still. It's true, you know, because they weren't true authentic relationships is personal yeah one-on-one touch that all of us need that's what right? happened to me Did that's you? what happened to me is that even though like i liked um getting that gratification i still felt lonely because like when no one would like or like or comment on my pictures i'd be like oh my god i have no one you mm, know what i mean yeah that's how i felt mm. and then you had like there wasn't many people around you anyway physically yeah, exactly so so yeah, that's, that's so crazy. Yeah. So okay. So you're at this place. I'm so glad awakening you it gets rid of <laughs> kills the noise. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> First problem solved. Oh, and then music. Music. Because music. Oh. I, I know it's probably it's such gnarly, a big deal. Yeah. But music. There's some music that I can listen to from my past life. Of like I put on certain yeah. like Motley Crue songs or yeah. Yeah. certain like <laughs> that's um, funny. Uh, Guns mm. N' Roses songs. I'm like. Oh my gosh! I, I remember being here with this girl. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, oh, brings you back. my mind's Dude, not good there. <laughs> I know, I know, totally. Um, I think for me, I um, especially with the, those kinds of things, it brings back memories. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why they don't let a whole lot of music in mm-hmm. because of that. Mm-hmm. And then you're just gonna feel the same way, or like, you know what I mean. And so, um, and teenagers get really, really heart heart attached to their music. That's mm-hmm. like their life. Like yeah. they can't, like it's how they express, it's how they um, communicate, you know? It's how they they receive, I guess, emotions, yep. you know? And it's, re- sha- it's, it's the same thing too. Like, like social media, music, it starts, it shapes, shapes. and molds yep. you. It's true. You know, it shapes and molds you yeah. to um, who, who you are. You yeah. know, I remember hearing this, this one thing before. It's crazy, you know, the, the, the Bible talks about you know, insinuates that Satan, Lucifer, may yeah. be in control of the music, right? The choir in, in heaven yeah. and music, how it's so inspired and what it can do, yeah. you know? And it's like, you know, you get this picture in your mind, you know, major concerts and people are going crazy or whatever. And the, the lyrics and then the whole thing that's all bent on like total of the flesh, you want to perform the things of the flesh. Yeah. And that's why on the flip side, like worship and everything it's like you want to br- give your allegiance to the Lord, mm-hmm. you know? You know, we're, we're, we're beings that are meant to worship God. Right. And it's interesting is when we worship as Christians, we put our hands in the air, which mm-hmm. is a sign to surrender. But mm-hmm. that, that's how you worship. You're like, you know, in awe. And then you go to concerts and what are people doing? The same yeah. thing. Yeah. They're putting yeah. their hand up Powerful. and they're worshiping. So and they sometimes. call them, they call them rock stars <laughs> because these people become to worship. And I know because yeah. when I was younger, uh, you know, me and him, we we were more into like the old like classic rock and like yeah. the the old seventy or the like Jimmy the old Hendrix, like, the Doors, Hendrix, the Beatles, Hendrix, the, Doors the Beatles. Yeah. We yeah. grew up in 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 that stuff um, because we were we were also into a lot of uh, LSD and stuff like that back yeah. then. Um, and that stuff all kind of goes hand in hands, but it did mold and shape it us does, completely into into that. And we were like literally like I would eat up like you just said, I would eat up every word that came out of Hendrix's mouth. Right. Every word that came out of the door's mouth and, and the Beatles and John Lennon and, yeah. and Jane's Addiction. And I mean, Jane's, all oh, of them. Jane's, Jane's Addiction. Addiction. I mean, pretty yeah. much like all the music as teenagers as we listen to. I mean, even then, like, you know, the, uh, you know, um, uh, with, with Guns N' Roses. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as I started getting more wild and crazier, gnarly, like I'm listening to Guns N' Roses, Motley Crue, and like the party you, party live, you start, yeah. you yeah. become that music. And I totally. think about in my peak of insanity, <laughs> you know, Motley Crue and, and, you know, all that crazy stuff, Yeah, you know, but, and that's how you express. And what's interesting is not only as a, as a kid or like a teenager, but you carry that. I, I was like, you know, you said that that's how teenagers do it. I was up to 32 years old. I was still living out that lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. And I also, I, well, I, you know, I OD'd in a hotel room and I was like, 
Yeah. Okay, so there has to be more than this. But that was the same music I was listening, still living it out. So true. That was a hard transition for me, to tell you the truth. Like, because the music thing, and I'd still listen, whatever. But, you know, when I came to the Lord and all the stuff was on, all the music that Ryan said, plus, you know, some rap, you know, America's Most Wanted, Ice Cube, all that kind of stuff. It's like, this is the the blackest man in the white body. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. I knew knew it all, all the easy, all that kind of stuff. And it's just in my mind. And then, like, when somebody gave me a worship CD and there's, like, this girl singing with, like, a soft voice, I'm like, I'll roll my windows up, man. This is not (laughs) Tupac. But then then after a while, you saw, wow, it started to affect you, started to change your heart, you know? And, like, you were saying, like, um, young people, man, you take their phone away, they, like, get crushed. You know, you take away their music, they get crushed. Why? Because it's who they are in a lot of ways yeah. or who they think they are. Oh, it, it's so shaping good. the way that they, they think, right? I, I agree with you 100%. Especially with the Beatles and all that, that was probably the, my, my favorite, you know, growing up. And, you know, I, I heard a song the other day and it just made me think like how we were. It's like you're following like what they were saying back then. You're like, I'm on the same wavelength. But they were high. <laughs> they were high. Yeah, right. And yeah. this is the thing. <laughs> it levels off. Like yeah. it plateaus. He's like, yeah, yeah, I agree with Jimi Hendrix. I agree with all this stuff. And then it's like, but they don't have the the perfect answer of life. And many of so those true. artists died young. They yeah. the lives were broken. Yeah. And the enemy ripped them off. Yeah. And you know, that's what young people see too. They try try to emulate a lifestyle that's not real. You know, you find these young guys, you know, going after living this hardcore lifestyle of gangs and everything. And there's mm-hmm. gangs, legit gangs all across Southern California, all that stuff. Yeah. But a lot of the music that are listening to you, once these guys get a big record label, they're living in gated communities. You know, they're not living this lifestyle no, no more. But these guys are in jails, you know, following a lifestyle yeah. that's just destroying yeah. them. So here you are listening to music. You're a little punk rock Girl, green hair, blue hair, red hair. Yeah. Sometimes mixed hair. <laughs> um, and you're following following this stuff and you get your music taken away, you get your iPad taken away and everything else. And here you are at this house. What were uh, some of the things? What was the transition? How'd you, how'd you cope? How'd you, or did you cope? <laughs> yeah, that's the question. Um, you hmm. probably didn't want to go in originally. I didn't know I was going. Oh, set up. Set you up. Yeah, I didn't know I was going. My dad um, told me that we were going shopping in Chicago. I was spending a, a week with my friends in Arizona, and mm-hmm. he said, hey, hey, um, make sure you don't miss this flight. That's what he said. Make sure you don't miss <laughs> this flight. We're going to Chicago. We're going to see some friends and go shopping and stuff. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. And, um, and so we drove, and... Um, Next morning, uh, we stay in a hotel. I, I actually remember this. I remember I woke up and I was just like, and, and my dad, I think I think he asked, how are you, Janaea, this morning? I said, I'm just sad. Like, I just, I'm just not feeling it, you know? Mm-hmm. And that was like every day. And so um, so we drove there and I met Miss Tiffany. Mm-hmm. We we call her Miss Tiffany and Mr. Travis. It's mm-hmm. like, a, you know, yeah, their yeah. authority. And so, yeah, totally. um, so we met Miss Tiffany and... Um, you know, uh, just talked to her and uh, I said, or she asked me, do you think your dad loves you? I said, no. Yeah. I said, he put me through all this crap. I've been having to do with this. Why would he, why would he love me? And so later on we talked and he was like, all right, Jenea, you're staying here for high school. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I will, Hey. Who wouldn't do that? Yeah. yeah, right. If you get, you know, you're taken. But your dad, yeah. I, I know, and this is all in the book. Yeah. Um, talked about this, but your dad obviously was was desperate. Yeah. He loved. He totally. loved you. He loved you so much. I'm, obviously, I know. you know that now. Yes, I know that. But now. when, uh, when you're in the situation, you're oh, yeah. like, yeah. how could you? Yeah. But the reality is, your dad knew that the the things that you were because you were dealing with some pretty hardcore. Totally. You were. I mean, let's yeah. let's kind of talk about. Maybe, you know, as much as you want to, but uh, some of the things that you were going through. So first of all, you grew up, your dad was a, your dad was a rock star at that time, but he left corn at mm-hmm. its peak, yeah. left, got ripped off by some, some crooked Christians, some Judas. You guys got to the point where you lost all your money, where you guys were literally like getting in the book. It says that he was scrounging out change out of the, out of the sofas so they could buy a, pe- a loaf of bread to put butter on it. Yeah. So you didn't grow up under this like, Hardcore, like, you know, rolling around in Bentleys and this big mansion. You no way. you grew up from humble beginnings. Totally. But because you've got affected by different things that were going on in your life, 
now you were you were going through uh you, what what situations or what stuff were you kind of struggling with at this point um i was so depressed depression so much depression um some self harm i would mm-hmm. like i would cut myself i'd beat myself i'd just like burn burn myself with lighters which if you're listening this is common uh this this is happening um in the church and out of the church totally yes totally mm-hmm. it's a big to be deal addressed. i talk- mm-hmm. yeah big time um and so those are the some of the things that i'm i i was dealing with and um yeah it was so hard and it was hard because i had friends around me who were getting into it too and so they'd be like yeah life just sucks and, it, and we just have to deal with this together you know what i mean mm-hmm. there was never like you're gonna get through this just be strong it was never like that it was like no nope, this is yeah. it's just this it, is it. Yeah. yeah and so it was just hard i was like in this i was like in this box like this box that was surrounded by all this dark mm-hmm. darkness and i just couldn't get out mm. so now here crazy. you are at this at this place they take away everything your dad's like look people i'm pretty sure he said i love you naya i gotta go and yeah staying here because you're gonna do high school and you would have if you would have kept doing going your route you might not even be alive today totally. so that's the best decision your dad made so yeah. so now you're there um what what was the what was the process of of you kind of because you don't have a relationship with jesus at this point no way so, you know so like no way. Uh, let's just talk about how the heck did you find jesus <laughs> that's the question. <laughs> that's the question. Okay, so you know what? When I was a kid, I totally believed in Jesus. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was so in love with the fact that um, this man would choose me and my dad, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I had like a childlike faith, you know, yeah. that people talk about. I was a child and I had that faith. Yeah. And so... I just I just remember praying to him and I'd and I I know that he was walking with me and um you know as I grew up and I saw all the fake Christians and people around me that were just messing up and how uh, some hard stuff that I went through in my life too yeah like sexual abuse my mom leaving stuff mm-hmm. like that big time and so um so I kind of looked at him and I was like uh so where so I believed in you but now where are you yeah. mm-hmm. where are you and so. So later on, as I got involved with my friends, I was like, I'm not, I'm not into that. I'm not into you. Like, screw you mm-hmm. after, you know, I was hurting. And so mm-hmm. I turned into Buddhism, mm-hmm. Hinduism, all that stuff. Or I was a Rastafarian for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's like a, a lot of people, you know what? Hey, interesting enough, a lot of people use religion as the salad bar. They're Dude. like, I love the grace of Jesus. Yep. I like the uh, the croutons. I like uh, the, the whole Buddha thing. I yeah. like this. I like that. So and I believe in all these different things which make up my being. Tell you what, yeah. So that's that's normal. Dude, but I could feel when I would when I would try to empty myself, it felt dark. Mm. Yeah. Super dark. Like when you, because when you're trying to empty yourself, you're losing yourself and you're letting other things in. Yeah. Right. Like so, through that meditation and all the exactly, all that kind of so you actually went through stuff. and tried doing some of that, some of that stuff, yeah. Wow, Never, not super deep, yeah, but, but no, but you tried it because you're yeah. experimenting, yeah, totally. And it felt dark, I really, totally well, because you're opening your you're opening yourself up to this. You know, it's what? A spiritual Let, world. Yeah, we have sixty seconds left, and this is a good place to stop. <laughs> okay, yeah, collaborate and listen. <laughs> Ice okay, is Ice is back with his something invention or something, yeah. brand new, uh, brand new something, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's messed it all up. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I wasn't ever a rapper. You were. You I should could, yeah, be. Yeah, I could have done it, but you guys messed up the rhythm right there. I couldn't well, you're listening to Live with Ryan Reese. <laughs> uh, we have Jenea in studio. You're what? How old, how old are you now? 18. You're an adult? Yeah. You're, legal. A, you're out the door. <laughs> Graduated high school. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Well, we're going to be back. Uh, we've been having a pretty heavy conversation. But um, a lot more to come on the other side. You guys, make sure you guys go to the whosoevers.com. You could always keep up with the Kill the Noise Tour. If you want to book them, go to the whosoevers. You can um, uh, write an email in. We'd love to come to your school this year. Also, there's a bunch of brand new product that's out. And a major thing, it's going to be the fourth annual, August 20th, oh, yeah. at Pirates Cove Baptism at 12 p.m. Ryan will be there, Sonny and Ronnie Feist. We'll see you on the other yeah. side of the break. Peace. 
Drive with Ryan Reese coming up. Is everything all right? Sure. Call now, 1-888-564-6173. Or post your questions using the hashtag LiveRyanReese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Uh, I think I speak for the entire administration when I say... Back to live with Ryan Reese. Don't say what I warn you. Loud noises. <laughs> <That's funny>. <laughs> <laughs> Beware. Oh, we are exposing the truth on this program. <laughs> we are on a mission to reveal all the dark stuff that's happening in this realm to shed light on it because Jesus is the light of the world. Mm. And then you can be set free. That's why we do this show. Exactly. Yep. So thank you for showing up. Loud noises. <laughs> you know who that is? Who? Loud noises. What, what's the it's guy? Steve Carell. From, from The Office. From The Office, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew I recognized that. <laughs> I know. I was like... <laughs> we had it on the show for a long time. I thought and it was Jim Carrey. I thought it was Jim Carrey the yeah, whole time. Really? And then someone <laughs> called me out on the show. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm all, that's funny, huh, Jim Carrey? And they're like, that's not him. I'm like, hmm? <laughs> <laughs> the guy from The Office. <laughs> funny. All right, well, before the break... Um, well, if you just tuned in, we have uh, Jenea uh, Welch. Uh, Brian Head Welch is young and only daughter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she's in studio and she's basically uh, was telling us her story on um, growing up um, with her dad. And didn't grow up in this wealthy area. Her dad had money when he left corn, but he got ripped off by some people that use uh, Jesus' name. And took advantage of them, and they they got to the point um, in Head's new book talks about where they were searching through the couches to find money to buy just a loaf of bread to feed him and his and his daughter. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, long story short, he uh, she she's growing up as this this punk rock girl, eating eating up every word that's coming out of the mouth of the artist that she's listening to, and she starts going through a depression, anxiety, struggling with um, uh, self-harm, cutting, different things, and um, that all boiled down to the point where Head just had to get her to a place called Awakening Youth for this experience. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about this experience right now. Yeah. And uh, that was the beginning of when her life started to change, but we're on a journey to find out how she found the Lord. But before we went to break, you said that you were getting involved with different religions or just yes. checking out different things. Yeah. And you were trying to empty yourself because that's kind of, what 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 was that empty yourself? What is that all about? Um, In, in Buddhism, yep. like when you meditate om, it's yep. basically. And that's scary. 
Because yep. that's like totally. opening doorways to the supernatural realm. If you're yep. emptying yourself, something else is going to fill you up. Yep. Mm-hmm. So uh, that that left you feeling very dark. Yeah. And what felt dark. what were these what were the steps to you to find uh, the the King Jesus? Mm, okay, so I was um, dropped off at Awakening Youth, yeah. um, basically, and um, you know at first I was panicking because I, I dealt with some uh, abandonment issues before. Mm. I think with um, just everything, just all the stuff that happened in my life, and. Um, and so I felt like my dad was just dropping me off again. And so I had super... Oh, yeah. That's, that's exactly. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so I had so much anxiety. I was crying a lot. I was angry. I was, you know, just going crazy for like two days. And um, I guess like it was really hard to wrap my rind... Uh, my rind. <laughs> wrap my <laughs> mind. <laughs> wrap my rind. <laughs> um, wrap my mind around being at a Christian program. I was like, I'm not doing this. I'm not getting letting anything in. No, no, no. You know yeah. what I mean? And so... How am I... How can I burn this place down? <laughs> <laughs> right. Piece of gasoline in a match. It's on. Dude, I was thinking of so many she ways... She too, by the way. Uh, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was thinking of so many ways how to leave. I was like, okay, it's snowing outside, but I wonder if I just leave the door right now. I just, I just find someone car. But then like, you're like, I seen that one movie, and the yeah. guy's toes froze off, and they had to chop them off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. And so, um, and so, I guess for me, um, I journal a lot, mm-hmm. and um, I'd write about you know, just all the stuff that happened in my life one night. Um, Just like from when I was a kid, I wrote about my mom leaving, some sexual abuse stuff, Mm -hmm. um, my dad finding God and dealing with like the fake Christians Mm -hmm. and friends and boys and girls and, you know, all that stuff. Just like, and um, some personal stuff that I did. And I guess like, um, after I wrote it out, I was just like, I felt kind of like a peace and I and I longed to be, um, I guess, I, I remembered my childlike faith that I had. And it was almost like I was in my bunk bed. It was like two weeks in, two weeks in the program. And um, I, I almost like shrunk back into being like a child, like a small mm-hmm. child. It's like all of my impurities washed away and I was just a child. And I was like, I wrote in my notebook, I was like, oh, Jesus. I just please come into my life again. Just make me so whole. I'm just, I'm, I'm running away and I think it's you, but how can I trust you? Everyone in my life has left me. Mm-hmm. My dad's left me. How am I supposed to trust you kind of thing? And so, um, so I said, God, just, if, if this is it, just please just come into my heart. Just save me. Like, I'm so sick. I'm so wary. I just need something. And so he did. Mm-hmm. He came into my life and we went to a charismatic church. What was, um, really quick before we get there, what was the okay. process? Like, so he gave, you, you, he came into your life. How'd you know that he was in your life? What were the effects? What'd you see? What were things? Were you thinking different? Were you... Like, I felt so much peace. Okay, peace. So much peace. I had so much anxiety all the time. Yeah. Anxiety. And I was depressed. And um, I just felt so peaceful. And I just felt airy. You know what I mean? And yeah. and I think um, that I noticed that changed a little light, bit. Light, airy, light. Light and airy. Like that ba- like that, that burden. Burden's you don't have lifted, the heavy, yeah. that weight anymore. Exactly. And and w- w- we went to a carriage, uh, ugh, charismatic Mm-hmm. charismatic church mm-hmm. at the time mm-hmm. and um i felt god so much there mm-hmm. i think when they would pray over me i was like this is nothing nothing like anything else mm-hmm. you know what i mean and so i think just um differentiating um that god and the god that i knew yeah. you know well I mean? you kind of grew up like me where it was always around you yeah. So it's almost like uh, you're like, well, you get numb. yeah, I'm a Christian. My parents are Christians. Yeah. Like I grew up in a Christian family. I'm a Christian. Yeah. yeah. But there's no relationship. Exactly. So yeah. this is, so what we were talking about earlier in the show or before the show today, mm-hmm. this was like when you actually had an encounter with God, when you felt the Holy Spirit, you invited him in your life, you totally. felt peace. Totally. And that's, and then the Bible speaks, he says, you know, uh, uh, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You pray, the, you totally. get baptized mm-hmm. with the Holy Spirit, which Jesus says in Acts 1.8, you 
you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Totally. And when it talks about the Holy Spirit, it's the the peacemaker, the paracletus, the come alongside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the comforter. The comforter. Yeah. When I was in a, when I said that prayer in my hotel room, when I uh, gave my life to Jesus, mm-hmm. um, I didn't feel peace that night. I just said the prayer, but um, I went to bed, bed immediately. But when I woke up the next day and I was in the plane reading the Bible, mm-hmm. I just like had this Holy Spirit encounter. I just felt peace. That's what happened to me. I yeah. didn't know what it was though. I was just like, totally. I feel peace. And I'm glad you said that too because <laughs> you know sometimes people think that there's going to be like this big white light that comes over yeah. your room and no that's how way. you're going to know that God is working in your life. But I would attest the same thing. Mm-hmm. When I came to the Lord, my life was horrible. I'd had two yeah. DUIs in seven months. I was dealing with depression. You know, there were different things happening in my life. But I remember, you know, I had been reading the Bible. I was sitting in the church and Ryan's dad was teaching And then all of a sudden, it was like this, you said childlike faith. It was like I was having like that feeling like when I was younger, when you had no issues or problems, even though my life was horrible, and that God was really going to do, was doing a work in my life. And God's peace Mm -hmm. in the midst of confusion, I say it all the time, God can give you peace in the midst of confusion. And like what Ryan was talking about, I don't know if you were saying this before the break or whatever, you said, what people need is an encounter with the Lord. And that's mm-hmm. what you're talking about right now, Janan. Like you had an encounter with the Lord that now changed the direction of your life, changed the direction of Ryan's life. And the Lord has changed the direction of my life. And you know, one, one thing that's also, that's so important to what the God does is God desires us to walk in truth, to walk in transparency. Mm -hmm. because we're always having to cover our tracks and we're carrying a burden like it weighs you down. It beats. That's why people go nuts. They go crazy today. The Lord desires us to walk in truth because he cares for us. Mm -hmm. And it says that when we walk in the truth, man, man, we have fellowship with God and things start to connect. It's, it's the guilt and shame too. Yeah. Like while people like from my past life, your past life, your past life, when all that anxiety, all that Mm -hmm. depression, Mm -hmm. not only things that have happened to us in our life, but things that we have done because of the things that have happened, Mm -hmm. you start feeling all this anxiety, this pressure, depression, and then you're self-medicating, doing drugs and you self-harm and then you're looking for outlets through pornography and all this stuff. And then when you add all this stuff up, (sighs) no wonder you... (laughs) feel the way you feel right i mean there's people uh we got a call that we're going to take here in you know in a few minutes but there's people that i get direct messages all the time on instagram Mm -hmm. people email me people call in the show all the time yeah but people are dealing with all this stuff and then when you really start going um when you start digging into what these people are going through it's very simple is that um it's all the stuff that they're involved with, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? So here you are. You're a perfect example. We're just going to use you as an example tonight. Okay. You're, you're wrapped up in all this crazy stuff. Yeah. You give you, you, you went to that childlike faith just, and that's literally just going, <laughs> Jesus, if you're real and you exist, just forgive me for my sins and come into my life. Mm-hmm. And that's where the relationship starts with God. That's, yeah. you could be at a crossroads. If you listeners are at a crossroads tonight in your life and you're dealing with, well, who knows what? But I guarantee everyone that's in this room has dealt with one thing or another that you're going through right now. But you got to get to that point. You got to humble yourself and know and, de- and desire to have a, a savior, which his name is Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. the one that created everything and go to him like a child and say, Jesus, forgive me for my life. Come into my life and help me to sort out these issues in my life. And it's going to be one step at a time. Wow, mm-hmm. yeah. He's going to be cleaning you up. And here you are. You give your life to God. And he starts taking you through this experience, this journey at Awakening Youth. And um, now, I mean, just to see uh, you from where you were, uh, you're, it's like... There's like joy on your face. It's a transformation. Too. But yeah. this is what I see. Do you remember when Nicodemus came to Jesus that night and said, Hey, Jesus, what do we got to do to be, you know to basically be saved. He's like, you got to be born again. And Nicodemus looked at him like, like crawl in my mom's womb again as a grown man, like crawl up inside and like pop back out and be born again. Jesus, right? you're tripping. Yeah. He's like, no, man. He's like, dude, you see the, where the wind blows? You see how the wind blows on the, on the, on the leaves? Like you don't see the wind blowing. You, you see the, right. the effects of the wind. Right. And he mm-hmm. says in the same way, that's how you be born again. You, you just, like I don't see the Holy Spirit on you, but I see the effects of the Holy Spirit yeah. on you. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's like night and day difference. Mm-hmm. And um, that's, what, that's what people need. So now, you, obviously, God has a plan for you. What is your plan now? You're 18. Mm-hmm. 
What are you, you're grown up. I know your dad's kicking you out the door. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> no way. <laughs> he's like, Janae, please come home. I know. He's like, oh, He's been wait. texting me like crazy. Hey, you're going to be with her. Hey, call, tell her to call me. Hey, this and that. <laughs> I know. He loves you, man. He's, <laughs> st- he's stalking you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> awesome. I'll tell you what, too. Since I've been to Awakening Youth, our relationship was crazy and like just not good we're like we're gonna we're fighting mm-hmm. yelling at each other screaming at each other sometimes it got a little physical yeah um and so crazy sometimes crazy and so i remember the first phone call like you, you have to wait a month to talk to yep. your parents and i remember um the like i just we had facetime he just said hi Nan, and i just cried I was just like, I'm so sorry. I just felt so much remorse no for way. everything I had, you know, because I was like, I don't know. I was just awakened. Yeah. Awakening yeah, you. you were. I you was were awakened. awakened to all the things that were around me and all I was hurting myself. Mm-hmm. I was like trying to find other things to fill. But really, he was right here. He was like, I was here all along. Mm-hmm. And he starts restoring so, your life. He starts restoring relationships. Exactly. Like and so me and my dad have never been closer never ever That's been awesome. closer till now and uh, i love him very very much and mm-hmm. well it's the it's the it's the gifts of the holy spirit you know it talks about in galatians 3 mm-hmm. um you probably have them memorized because uh-huh. that's how you roll but what <laughs> are the gifts of the holy i know it's like gentleness patience kindness yeah, galatians, self-control galatians 5 yeah joy the, joy. the joy and peace and everything you were saying right now self-control all those things, those are the results of a life that has been dedicated to the Lord and it just flows out of your life, you know? Mm-hmm. I had problems with my family too and my dad, my dad, I drove him crazy and then the restoration process that were able to, to be there and the way you start treating people, you know, all the things that are found in scripture, you know, and Ryan talks about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings God's word to life. You know, mm-hmm. and the, Jesus says he will lead, guide you, and direct you in all truth. Yeah. And it's a crazy thing because he changes your heart's desire. Sometimes people get like caught up, well, that means I got to stop doing this, stop doing that. It's not like that. No right? way. God changes your desires. He put, brings conviction in your life sometimes yeah. of things that's going to harm but, you. But explain conviction because some people don't, that sounds like yeah. a bad word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Conviction. laughs> yeah. It's kind of scary. Yeah. Yeah. Conviction is like this. It's showing you what's right and wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, for so many t- years of your life, maybe you, you had no problem with like cursing out um, family or cursing out people yeah. on the street or um, doing drugs or, or doing or cheating alcohol, on your wife, cheating yeah, on your right. wife, living like promiscuous or whatever, whatever it is. Then you come to the Lord, he does, does a work in your life. You're like, oh, you hear something like, ugh. Like something that you always loved all the time. It doesn't yeah. seem right anymore. It's like, like those you know, old, I don't want to listen to it no more. Or, you know, a relationship. It's like those old, it's like those old comedy movies that we grew up. All those comedy those movies we grew up. Thing for me. And then all of a sudden you watch it now and you're like, dude, that's raunchy, dude. Yeah, I, I yeah. know. I, mean, I, I know. Used to I love did this that movie. Too. Which is yeah. so crazy because yeah. I tell people, it's not my willpower because my willpower is horrible. Many times, I mean, remember back in the day, right? We'd be like, all right. We'll drink now. We're not going to do no more meth. You know, we're not going to do this or yeah. that. Like that was and at our 10 o'clock in the evening. Before you know yeah, it, you're right. running to somebody else and it all falls apart. It's not willpower. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit. He gives you strength to resist temptation. And he also shows you, he grants you discernment to be mm-hmm. like, man, this is God leading me in my life. This is the right decision that I'm supposed to make in my life. He will grant you peace. He yeah. will give you clarity through his word. And he will open up doors that no man can shut. And that's how God works. He works, Ryan says it the same thing. He works supernaturally, naturally. Mm-hmm. Like you're like, wow, he brings somebody in your life. And it's like this perfect um, communication you have with a person. And it's like ordained by God. It's like yeah. all those things. And so that's why why I, I love walking with the Lord because he gives, when I say conviction, he shows you what is right and wrong, what's pleasing to him. And the Bible says that our lives are now to please him. We please God by the way we live our lives and serve the Lord and we find the purpose for life. You don't lose your life, you gain your life. You know, as we've been sitting here all, all night talking about this, and because you are a, a writer and, <laughs> and you have that desire for writing, I think of Ephesians chapter two, which talks about how somebody is saved. That at once we were against God, doing our own thing, but God's grace is showered upon our lives. And in verse 10 of chapter 2, it says, For we were created in Christ Jesus to be his workmanship. And the word workmanship means poema. Mm -hmm. We are his written poem. 
our lives are a testimony wow. of God's goodness and His graciousness in our lives. It's amazing. And everything that's taken place in your life, Jenea, from your rebellion for a while, you know, growing up in a home where your dad is trying to get his life together, mm -hmm. you know, and the ups and downs of his own personal life, losing everything and then walking with the Lord, and then you trying to find yourself with the Lord, and Ryan, or his rejecting of God for so many years of your life, my rejecting of God. And when you take a step back, you see, wow, like, God's long suffering and his patience in my life, he had his hand upon me. Even when you had those moments, you're like, God, where are you? Ryan mm -hmm. said the same thing in his life when things were wrong in his life. I said Peter, that. And, hate God. Yeah, you, you just like, you know? dude, yeah. I give up. And no doubt there's people that are listening right now that feel the same way that we have felt. Mm -hmm. And what we would want to share with you guys tonight is like, God is right where, where you are right now. Mm -hmm. And he can be known to you tonight. By saying, wow. Lord, if you are real, come into my life. Reveal yourself to me. I'm done doing my own things. We all grew up with a crew. Like me and Ryan grew up with a big crew. A lot of friends went all over the place. Joke all the time. On the outside, it looked like we were having a great time and had good times at times. But in reality, we all came to a place in our life when we were alone. Something was messed up, jacked up in our lives. And we had to call out to the Lord and God changed everything. So we would just say to you, don't put on a front, don't put on the facade, don't be trying to live a life through, you know, even like a fake life of social media or other outlets. Yeah. God loves you as you are and he's able to change and transform you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We have a call. Yeah. You want to take, take it? it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Yep. All right. We're going to go ahead and take a call. I always... Uh, Murder the name, so. Well, if it's right, if it's spelled right, you, Yvonne? Yeah. Yvonne? I don't even want to say, say names I would anymore. say Yvonne, but it is Yvonne. Let's go ahead and take Let's it go. from North Hollywood. Hello. 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 How are you doing tonight? Hey, how are you doing? Doing um, good. I just, a, I just had a question. Um, I'm kind of like, I know you guys were talking about and all, like about anxiety and stuff like that. Um. I'm kind of like going through that right now. It's been like probably I would say like eight days of just just pure anxiety and um mm -hmm. and a little bit of depression, but not so much. Just very anxiously. Mm -hmm. um, I was just wondering, like you know, is it wrong to medicate? I mean, is mm -hmm. it you know, like I have all these symptoms on me and stuff. Yeah. You know, I do get in the Word and pray and mm -hmm. ask God to like help me to get through this and stuff but at times it's like because i'm just so anxious and stuff it just yeah. doesn't like yeah. break you know what mm -hmm. what like what is the um my question is like what What's going on in your life uh, that that's causing all, all this this anxiety? I mean, obviously, we know the scriptures say be anxious for nothing. You know, be still right. and know that I am God. And I know life is crazy. You know, yeah. right? Um, but is there like what 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 stuff are you involved with that's 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 bringing bringing so much anxiety? Because I I know that sp there is a lot of spiritual warfare too that could right. bring on that could bring on anxiety as well. Right. Right. Um, kind of like I guess. I've got it, like, probably back in 2007 when I was, um, well, I was saved as a child and stuff, but I would go to church, you know, off and on, but then as I got into, like, my adult kind of years, teenage years, I kind of started, like, would go out and stuff, wouldn't really do church that much, and then, like, as I got older, I, you know, I, about 27, I would say that's when I, you know, went back to the Lord and started mm -hmm. serving God and stuff like that and just, you know just speak into God and stuff. I had, like, um, I would say two major, like, losses. Um, first was my daughter's father, who oh, died, no. and then a year later, my sister died. Mm -hmm. so I think so it's, like, probably been about five years. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't grieve. Um, I kind of, like, I would say I just, you know, gave it to God and then kind of, like, just, sucked it up, you know, right. and then yeah. just went on about, like, just going to church and just, you know, doing me, but at the end, it's like, it's always, like, my family and stuff, I grew up in, like, my childhood wasn't so great, you know, my parents, mm -hmm. you know, always fighting and stuff, but, I mean, I think when I started to know the anxiety coming more was just being, like, a, I think probably around just being around where I'm not supposed to be, the people, the environment, the family chaos. It's just like 
constant chaos. There's never yeah. such a good. There's never such a good thing. You know, you're, I'm always hearing something bad or something happens. You know, it's just like. Mm-hmm. And now that I see that I'm older now, like. I suffered also with bulimia for like four years after, you know, my sister passed. So I had to, you know, figure out, you know, I just started hurting myself, you know, yeah. and um, basically just taking out of myself because I didn't know where else, you know, I, I knew God, I knew that, but mm-hmm. it just wasn't working, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. I just felt like he wasn't there. Hey, how do you say your name? Is it Ibana? Iban? It's Iban. Iban. You know, I, I would say a, a couple of things. One, you know, so sorry for all that you have gone through. It sounds like yeah. you've gone through a lot of different stuff. And and just by gauging what you're saying, I would say there's a lot of spiritual warfare that's definitely involved in your case. You know, and the enemy definitely wants to overwhelm us. You know, what mm-hmm. I say to a lot of people is that where the enemy try, likes to get us is get us overwhelmed by temporary circumstances. It, it gets us on the here and now. And that's why the wow. word continually reminds us to look up for your redemption draws near, to set your mind on things above and not on things of the earth and to seek God's kingdom first. And he's going to take care of all of your worry, you know? And those are the things you, Ryan shared it earlier about not being anxious for anything, but pray about everything. Um, I would go through the, the checklist of what you're doing spiritually first, and that is make sure you're praying. Make mm-hmm. sure because there's so many distractions and pressures, like you were saying about family, those can be distractions. And so you need to make sure that you take time to get alone with the Lord. That's yeah. a check. If you're doing that, that's great. Two, make sure that you're reading the word because that's what's going to bring you comfort and guidance. I know in my life, if I'm not reading a, a dedication form, like my days are harder to come by. I'm more irritable. I feel, you know, having Anxiety. a hard time. And yeah. when I take time aside and put those things first, just as God's word says, pray and read, those things help me. Going to a church that teaches the word, all of these things work together. Um, and then if all those things are being met and you're still struggling with those things, I mean, you can pray and you need to be praying and guide. There are some instances where people do need medication, but the thing is, is like you really need to pray. And if all of these, areas of your life are being covered and you really dedicate your life to the Lord because I do know a couple of close friends of mine that are legit Christians that have to take medication because of it um, mm-hmm. but it's something that you must do prayerfully and I would say very much last re- resort mm-hmm. because I believe the Lord is able to touch and to anoint you and to heal you with what you're going through and the last thing I would say one thing that I love to do when I get overwhelmed in life, and the Bible says to do this, is to give thanks in all things, for this is the will of God. I start thanking God for my my health, for my wife, for my children, for the roof over my head, all the simple things. And when you do that, perspective changes. So, Ivana, we, we love you. We'll be praying for you. We're gonna, Hey, stay on the line. We're going to um, actually take this call off on, air. On the other side. Okay. Everybody else, we'll see you next week. Peace. This has been Live with Ryan Reese. To connect or find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for Live with Ryan Reese.